So uh, we the last topic that we are going to take take up uh, in this course is detonations we will spend some time talking about detonation waves the structure of how we have proceeded is as follows we went through the Rankine Hugonio relations at some stage where we pointed out that the Rankine Hugonio the, 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 the Hugonio curve uh, breaks up into the upper branch and the lower branch and the lower branch corresponds to um, the deflagration of waves and the upper branch corresponds to the detonation branch and uh, uh, with that we then we then said uh, we will now focus on deflagrations right. Now the major problem that we had with the Rankine Hugonio relations was uh, that we were assuming that there is a inherent flame speed associated with it with which we could construct the uh, Rayleigh line because the Rayleigh line uh, the slope of the Rayleigh line uh, is equal to a minus m dot squared where m dot is the mass flux of the flow that is uh, passing through the wave and that relates to the flame speed basically. Therefore uh, by, by constructing a Rayleigh line we, we presume that we know what is its slope and that, that means we know what is the wave speed but in reality that is that turned out to be the high eigenvalue in the case of deflagrations and we had to get into the structure of the deflagration wave in order to try to find out the flame speed there uh, and so a similar situation uh, um, remains for detonations as well. Uh, so we will have to think about that at the moment so but basically I wanted to the, 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 the bottom line I mean or, or, the, or the commonality or the underlying thing about these things is we are primarily looking at premix reactants right. So that was the framework in which we, we did this uh, so from doing laminar deflagrations which is essentially uh, plain premix flames um, uh, we then moved on to diffusion flames and so on uh, not strictly in the framework of the Rankine Hugonio uh, relations but then we now going through all those things we now come back to uh, the detonation part of it and then we ask the first question what is the detonation wave speed right. Uh, in doing this we recognize that uh, uh, we, we noticed at the time that in general uh, even if you had what is called as strong detonations uh, they uh, approach the Sharp and Juge detonation unless the system is overdriven and uh, weak detonations seldom occurred because it required uh, highly reactive mixtures for, for the uh, reactions to occur um, in such a high rates that, 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 that you, you have the pro, uh, products that uh, 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 the reactions that are following the wave should happen at such high speed that when the wave propagates at supersonic speeds you now have the products that are following at supersonic speeds as well although not as fast as the waves themselves the, the, the wave itself. So uh, we were not necessarily concerned with uh, uh, weak detonations and we noticed that strong detonations tend to become Sharp and Juge detonations therefore uh, it, it, it makes sense for us to confine our attention to the wave speed of the Sharp and Juge uh, detonation wave so that is what we will do. Now in doing this unlike uh, in the case of deflagrations where we notice that the wave speed is actually an eigenvalue of a eigenvalue problem looking at the structure of the wave where we have to do the mass and energy balances uh, across the uh, or, or, or through the wave rather uh, here we notice that uh, the deflagration wave sorry the, the detonation wave is traveling at supersonic speeds. So it quite does not really know what is ahead of it the information does not propagate uh, uh, upstream therefore uh, uh, in, in a uh, it should be possible for us to actually try to get the uh, wave speed without having to get into the structure. So uh, in, in the case of uh, deflagrations we had this heat conduction that was happening upstream from the reaction zone that was heating up the reactants. Whereas in the case of detonation wave the detonation wave keeps going and it does not really know what is ahead therefore uh, we cannot really hope to actually look at the structure in order to resolve the wave speed. So there must be a trick that is involved somewhere here 
and, I, and, and I'll highlight this trick as we go along but we will pretend that uh, for the moment uh, that we, we do not have to necessarily go through the structure we will just keep going looking at the kind of Rankine analysis similar to Rankine Hugo new analysis uh, and, and then see where we can uh, try to exploit the nature of detonation to uh, look for the wave speed. So uh, for the Chapman Juge wave or particularly Chapman Juge detonation uh, in this context the, uh, the, the, the product speed is basically the speed of sound. So unlike for example in a, in a normal shock where the, the downstream uh, velocity is always subsonic when, when the upstream velocity is supersonic in the case of a Chapman Juge wave the downstream velocity is always sonic locally uh, at the, at the uh, speed of sound. So the speed of sound behind the detonation wave is we use the same notation as what we had before A infinity equals square root partial derivative of pressure uh, the, the downstream pressure with respect to the downstream density at constant entropy constant downstream entropy. Now here u infinity equals A infinity uh, at the upper CJ point. in the Hugonio curve so we have we have m dot equals uh, rho naught u naught equals rho infinity u infinity which is now equal to uh, rho infinity a infinity so from here u0 is equal to uh, 1 over rho0 rho infinity a infinity now now a infinity is uh, equal square root of gamma infinity r infinity t infinity so u0 equal to rho infinity over rho0 square root of gamma infinity r infinity t infinity right. So let us call this relationship number 1. Um, so here what the problem is u0 is actually what we are looking for this is very similar to what we did for the deflagrations okay. Uh, that is related to rho naught also very similar to deflagrations because there also we were actually trying to look for a relationship for m dot versus the rest and m dot is rho naught u naught but here what we what we now find see this is the problem uh, what we find is the wave speed which is essentially in a flame fixed coordinate system or a wave fixed coordinate system it is essentially u naught depends on the downstream quantities right rho infinity gamma infinity r infinity and t infinity and that is the problem so we now have to try to find out if we can uh, uh, evaluate those quantities right. So, so note that the wave speed which is essentially u0 depends on depends on the uh, uh, burn gas properties as a matter of fact the, 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 uh, we, we, we also know that for example uh, in the lower CJ point as well u infinity is equal to a infinity right and m dot being equal to rho naught u naught equal to rho infinity u infinity is valid regardless of where we are on the Hugonio curve right. So if you now plug in u infinity equal to a infinity that is valid for both upper CJ and lower CJ points 
So strictly speaking this could be a CJ detonation wave or CJ deflagration wave at this moment right. So we have not quite strictly speaking exploited the fact that we are particularly interested in the detonation wave at this, at this stage. So uh, keep that in mind and uh, look for where we are doing this. So what we want to now try to do is to explore or chase um, the, the, evolution, the evaluation of the burn gas properties. So let us let's try to do that. Um, one itself implies that uh, uh, rho naught squared u naught squared equals m dot squared equals uh, uh, gamma infinity p infinity rho infinity you can actually get this quite easily. Now in the Rayleigh really line we have uh, p infinity minus p naught divided by 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho naught equals minus m dot squared and then we plug this in here right. Um, so from, from this we can get 1 over rho naught minus 1 over rho infinity we swap this. Uh, so that we can get rid of the negative sign uh, in the m dot squared. So that would be p infinity minus p naught divided by gamma infinity p infinity rho infinity that is that is coming from here right. Now let us call this 2 and this would be pretty interesting and important at some stage in the future. Uh, from from now on what we are going to do something a little that, that could be a little bit boring all right but uh, we will come back to this and say well we can forget about everything that I said which is kind of complicated and boring but we can just go back and look at this and then see if we can exploit something here. So let, let, let me just uh, uh, go through whatever needs to be gone through and then we, we, we will we'll come back to this. So here what we want to do is multiply. Uh, above by p naught plus p infinity. So we have uh, p naught plus p infinity times one over rho naught minus one over rho infinity equals we now get p infinity squared minus p naught squared divided by gamma infinity p infinity rho infinity. So why did we do this? This is where we are now going to make the point that we are looking at a detonation wave. We have already made the point that we are looking at a Chapman Juge wave right and we pretended to be do, doing detonation but not quite yet until now right. So what we are what we want to do is to notice that across the detonation wave the pressure increases manifold right so uh, many times and therefore p infinity is larger than p naught quite larger than p naught actually right. Now what we do not want to do at this stage at this step is to say that p infinity is much larger than p naught. So I used the, 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 the words carefully there I said quite larger than not really much larger than. So if you now say quite larger than right then we can we can then easily say that p infinity squared is much larger than p naught okay p naught squared. So what we are going to right now do is to say uh, suppose p infinity squared is much larger than p naught squared. This is much less of an approximation when compared to directly supposing that p infinity itself is much larger than p naught okay. So this is this is all right this is this is okay but what, what we are going to have do what we what we will find is this is not going to really um, help us directly it is going to le lead us to go into some circles and then we will come up with an iterative scheme of solving this right. 
so that is the boring part that I was just talking about and then we go through all that and then I am going to come back and say wait for an engineering purpose um, can I relax and say I do not want to actually multiply by p naught plus p infinity here and then get this p naught square to be considered to be much larger than p naught squared directly in 2 can I say if p naught is p infinity itself is much greater than p naught okay instead of looking at the squares uh, I will do that quite some time later okay but this is the point where we are beginning to talk about detention so that is essentially the idea and this allows us to get around the structure of the wave okay by doing by recognizing this we do not have to bother about getting the structure to unlike unlike we did in the uh, deflagration but there the physics demanded it okay so the, the, the upstream conduction demands that we consider the uh, uh, structure of the wave here we did not have to do that instead we actually short circuited by going through this approximation. So now let us suppose we will now continue to assume that p infinity squared is much greater than p naught squared and uh, that is going to imply that uh, uh, p naught divided by rho naught minus p naught divided by rho infinity plus p infinity divided by rho naught minus p infinity divided by rho infinity that is opening up these parentheses here um, that is equal to p infinity divided by gamma infinity rho infinity that means we have got rid of the p naught squared so we remain with p infinity squared one of the p infinity p infinity is there gets cancelled with the one at the bottom so you get only this at the right hand side and uh, so you use the equation of state um, r naught t naught minus rho naught divided by rho infinity r naught t naught plus rho infinity by rho naught r infinity t infinity minus r infinity t infinity that means wherever we have a p infinity by rho infinity we use an r infinity t infinity p naught rho naught p naught over rho naught we use r naught t naught but when you have this mixed kind of quotients we, we now take the ratios of densities and then use the equation of state uh, wherever applicable and uh, that is going to mean that on the right hand side you also write r infinity t infinity divided by gamma infinity so multiply this is the kind of boring part I was talking about so it is basically some algebra that we go through rho naught divided by um, r infinity t infinity and uh, that is going to get you a quadratic you might recall doing something like this with the Huguenio curve and the Rankine uh, the, the, and the Rayleigh line put together uh, earlier on to get the uh, upstream Mach numbers but uh, here our goal is slightly different so we get rho naught rho infinity over rho naught the whole square minus 1 over gamma infinity plus 1 minus r naught t naught divided by r infinity t infinity times rho infinity over rho naught minus r naught t naught divided by r infinity t infinity equal to 0 let us call this 3. Now this is a quadratic in rho infinity over rho naught right now but you see what, what are the coefficients the coefficients involves gamma r infinity r naught r t naught r infinity t infinity right so those are the coefficients there so uh, this solving this will give rho infinity over rho naught in terms of gamma infinity r naught t naught r infinity t infinity right. So of course we are still chasing that means uh, we wanted to go back here and then say can I get rho infinity 
Well, you can, but it's going to be in terms of gamma infinity, r infinity, t infinity. We need to know those things as well, right? So that's okay. So we, we are not introducing anything new. We are we are, you, we are uh, trying to count only the old things. So that's all right. Um, so we can easily now so also use uh, uh, p infinity. P infinity is related to uh, rho infinity uh, by rho naught and t infinity by essentially the ratio of equations of equations of state at the uh, product and uh, reactant conditions so that is uh, p infinity equal to uh, rho naught divided by rho infinity r naught t naught divided by r infinity t infinity times p naught so let us call this 4 the reason why we we number these equations is we will now go through an iterative procedure uh, iterative iterative solution procedure the first thing we do is assume a p infinity we do not know what p infinity is but let us assume it and did I make a mistake right P equals rho RT so we need to have P infinity equals is that right I want to make sure I do not make that mistake but I did so uh, zoom T infinity now next thing we do is calculate the equilibrium composition <coughs> yi infinity based on p infinity and t infinity that is assumed that is you once you get to step 3 you have a p infinity and t infinity to work with with which you now use the equilibrium composition uh, there and then so once you do this you now use the energy balance uh, and to check whether this is going to resolve things so check for uh, infinity from the Higonia relation In fact, we have the mass balance here, and the Rayleigh line is a combination of statements of mass conservation and momentum conservation. That's what we have been working with. We have never used energy conservation yet, so we will try to now try to use that as a check, right? So we will we will try to use the Higonia relation. We had. Uh, H infinity minus H naught equals one half one over rho infinity plus one over rho naught times P infinity minus P naught and uh, which means the sensible enthalpy part of it H s infinity minus H s naught. So what we do is we now split this in the sensible enthalpy and heat of formation. So the differences in the heats of formation of the products and reactants altogether is the, the heat release, right? So that is Q. So that would be Q plus one half one over rho infinity 
plus 1 over rho naught times p infinity minus p naught here then we want to use the internal energy that is but hs the sensible enthalpy is equal to internal energy plus p over rho therefore hs infinity minus hs not equal to e infinity minus e not plus p infinity over rho infinity minus p not over rho not okay let us now substitute this up there substitute this or in the higonial then we get e infinity minus e naught equal to one half 1 over rho infinity plus 1 over rho naught times p infinity minus p naught minus p infinity divided by rho infinity plus p naught divided by rho naught plus q. So simplify this you have uh, some opportunity to cancel things uh, therefore we get e infinity minus e naught equals q plus one half p infinity plus p naught times one over rho naught minus one over rho infinity. So here we can now go back and use this relationship number two, and what you get? You get a p infinity plus p naught over here. That's what we tried to multiply. But then, if you now use one over rho infinity, no naught minus one over rho infinity as this, you naturally get a product of p infinity plus p naught times p infinity minus p naught, which will lead to p infinity squared minus p naught squared, right? So, using two. Uh, e infinity minus e naught equals one half p infinity squared minus p naught squared divided by gamma infinity p infinity rho infinity plus q. Here again, you now try to approximate saying p infinity squared is much greater than p naught squared and therefore that is going to lead us to a e infinity minus e naught that is equal to one half p infinity divided by gamma infinity rho infinity plus q plus q and p infinity over rho infinity is r, r infinity t infinity therefore this is r infinity t infinity divided by 2 gamma infinity plus q which is uh, e infinity equals e naught plus r infinity t infinity divided by gamma infinity plus q so if you call this 5 then we have assumed a t infinity so the equilibrium composition is also now going to give you a a gamma infinity and r infinity right. So now you have for the assumed value of p infinity and t infinity you get gamma infinity and r infinity with which you can check right. So check if the 
above equation is satisfied. Right. So once you know that this is satisfied, you're okay with the choice of t infinity that you made in step two. All right. Of course, you still have the outer loop of having assumed a p infinity. So once you do this, solve for. So this is this is step three that we have just finished. Step four would be solve for um, rho infinity over rho naught using the quadratic equation. That's number three, right? And step five would be find p infinity from four. That's here. Right, then six check if this is the same as assumed. Right, so whenever we say check, we would like to do two, we would like to think about two things. One, it is always within a certain, certain tolerance. Okay, so you are not going to exactly match maybe you can match but to the first decimal place, second decimal place, third decimal place or as a percentage whatever it is you, can, you, want, to, you want to hold hold to a tolerance and if it is satisfied then you proceed if not then you have to repeat the inner loop right. So in this case for example you now assume t infinity and then you go through this check and if you are satisfied within the tolerance you proceed if you are not satisfied within the tolerance right then you assume a different t infinity in step 2 go through the check for the assume p infinity and then once you have uh, um, converged on a t infinity then you proceed to step 4 step 5 and then check. So in you check of course it is within a tolerance and within the tolerance if you have not satisfied then you have to go back and change your p infinity go through the whole thing again right. Uh, so, so you 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 do you do this? Of course, it's a bit a bit of a tedious process. So once you do this, so finally, um, step seven would be once p infinity, rho infinity, t infinity, and uh, r infinity are finalized. Use one uh, to find u naught. That's almost like the post processing, right? Now, of course, we find that this is kind of like a loop within a loop, and uh, uh, it's going to take a while for you to converge. So, instead of going through this, the next best thing that you can do, as I pointed out earlier, is don't push yourself to assume p in infinity squared is much greater than p not squared. Directly say, can I can I can I adopt p infinity itself? as much greater than p naught right. So a good approximation is, is to directly use p infinity itself as much greater than p naught in 2 right that is what I that is what I said we will go back to. So that implies 1 over rho naught minus 1 over rho infinity equal to we earlier had p infinity squared minus p naught squared divided by gamma p infinity rho infinity we threw away p naught squared in preference to p infinity squared cancel one of those p infinities at the top with one at the bottom and so on but now we have a p infinity minus p naught divided by gamma p infinity rho infinity p naught is thrown away in comparison with p infinity the p infinity directly gets cancelled with the one at the bottom so you are left with only 1 over gamma infinity rho infinity right. So this means that uh, rho infinity over rho naught is simply equal to gamma infinity plus 1 divided by gamma infinity. HS infinity 
minus h is not h is not equal to q plus one half p infinity minus p not times one over rho not plus one over rho infinity. In fact, we have we've just written it here, still around. Um, so here, what we want to do is to this is something that we did during the Rankine Hugonio days. Uh, that is, we want to write this as uh, gamma infinity over uh, gamma infinity minus one p infinity over rho infinity minus gamma naught divided by gamma naught minus one p naught over rho naught. The way we get this is we now say hs infinity is cp infinity t infinity. Cp infinity is gamma infinity. Um, uh, gamma infinity or infinity divided by gamma infinity minus 1 and then you had a t infinity or infinity t infinity is p infinity divided by rho infinity similarly for the not conditions. So uh, if you now do this and then the next step you do is you notice that you are not going to have a big difference in gamma infinity and gamma not that between the two okay to, to, to think about this gamma is basically ratio of specific heats ratio of specific heats depends on whether the gases are monatomic or diatomic or polyatomic whether it is linear polyatomic or nonlinear polyatomic and, and so on. Now if it is monatomic you are going to have uh, uh, something like uh, uh, so if, if it is diatomic you are going to have something like 1.4 if it is monatomic it is going to be like 1.6, uh, 6, 7 and, and so on and if it is polyatomic you may have something less than 1.4 right 1.3. So all these things are around of the order of 1 if you now think about orders of magnitude it is all of the order of 1. And mostly for mixtures of gases in both cases, uh, it's going to be in general a polyatomic system, and so we expect that we don't even have this variation, right? So we don't expect a big difference between gamma infinity divided by gamma infinity minus one and gamma naught divided by gamma naught minus one. So for an order of magnitude point of view, we notice that just like how we now threw away p naught itself as opposed to p infinity, right? We now say let us get rid of this entire term all right. So if you now do and similarly you can do uh, do it here as well in preference to p infinity. So wherever we find p infinity minus p naught kind of thing you now get rid of this. So with this we now say gamma infinity divided by gamma infinity minus 1 times p infinity minus one half uh, p infinity times rho infinity divided by rho naught plus one equals rho infinity q. Some more simplification. Uh, well, basically, you can pull out p infinity, all right, and then plug your rho infinity over rho naught as gamma infinity plus one divided by gamma infinity here, and pull this p infinity out. You had something in terms of gamma infinity here. This is also going to be in terms of gamma infinity. So you'll now have one big function that's say that's gamma infinity. Uh, that's in terms of gamma infinity. So quickly going through that divided by gamma infinity minus one minus half gamma infinity plus one divided by gamma infinity plus one uh, equal to rho infinity q and then you put things together uh, so we, we get p infinity times um, gamma infinity plus 1 divided by 2 gamma infinity times gamma infinity minus 1 uh, equals rho infinity q but then keep in mind that this itself after the simplification still has remnants of rho infinity over rho naught right. So and this rho infinity then gets cancelled with that right. So then you get p infinity equal to 2q 2q rho naught times gamma infinity minus 1. Now if you did not make a big fuss about 
having to find gamma infinity of course you can assume equilibrium find the composition and so on but the idea was you do not go through all that right that means you now say let us not worry about the variation of gamma between reactants and products you assume some gamma that is common and unknown then you directly get a value for p infinity just knowing the heat release and the density of the reactants right. The interesting thing here is Q is like joules per kg and rho naught is kilograms per meter cube so rho naught Q is like joules per meter cube so this is basically something like a volumetric heat release of the reactants right that means the denser the reactants greater the pressure all right that means denser the reactants it compacts more heat within it okay per unit volume and that means greater the downstream pressure in fact we have been exploiting the notion that the pressure itself is much greater than the inertial pressure and that is really the hallmark of detonation waves. So what is actually great about detonation waves is not as much about the uh, kilometers per second kind of velocities but what is uh, what is utilized in a detonation wave in terms of uh, applications is the pressure. So you have this huge pressure build up behind the wave and as the wave propagates it now has a rarefaction that follows it which sucks everything in and then destroys uh, uh, the materials that it passes through or, or the or the matter that it passes through. So here what we are basically seeing is if you were if you we are, we are actually talking about gases all, all, all over but if you now think about reactants that were actually in solid form and correspondingly you gave rise to some heat okay because of the gas evaporating and then reacting uh, sorry the solid evaporating and giving rise to the detonation wave in the gas phase all right then the volumetric heat capacity heat of the uh, of the reactants is a lot higher and therefore solid detonation uh, reactants give rise to a much higher increase in pressures right so you get you get this uh, physically meaningful uh, relationship from the, from making this approximation here and, and proceeding instead of getting stuck in this iterative loop. So finally so now we want to go back uh, to 1 and say u0 is equal to 1 over rho0 square root of uh, gamma infinity p infinity rho infinity that can be written as uh, 1 over rho naught square root of gamma infinity p infinity rho infinity over rho naught times rho naught and therefore we can write this as uh, still um, we got the rho naught there and so we can uh, write this as square root of gamma infinity p infinity divided by rho naught times gamma infinity plus 1 divided by gamma infinity cancel the gamma infinity equal to gamma infinity plus 1 and uh, so the gamma infinity gets cancelled and uh, p infinity divided by rho naught is uh, 2q times gamma infinity minus 1 that is equal to square root of 2 gamma infinity squared minus 1 times q. So what we can see is note that p infinity goes as q but u0 goes as square root of q so you do not quite get uh, you know the, the same effect out of the heat release and uh, let us just push, push this a little bit more and uh, we, are, we are pretty much there to see the result here so since uh, p infinity equals 2q rho rho naught times gamma infinity minus 1.
P infinity divided by rho infinity is equal to do Q rho naught divided by rho infinity times gamma infinity minus 1 then whenever you see a rho infinity over rho naught plug in a rho infinity gamma infinity plus 1 divided by gamma infinity so you say 2Q times gamma infinity gamma infinity minus 1 divided by gamma infinity plus 1 and uh, that gives you Q equal to so P infinity over rho infinity to start with is put it this way this is nothing but R infinity T infinity which is R u T infinity divided by W infinity right. So from here we can get Q trying to put these two together right Q is R u T infinity divided by W infinity times one half gamma infinity plus one divided by gamma infinity times gamma infinity minus one. So from here what we can see is Q goes as T infinity divided by W infinity and then putting these two together right we have u naught essentially goes as t naught sorry t infinity divided by w infinity to the half right. Now for those of us who are familiar with rocket propulsion we get a very similar result for the exit velocity of the rocket from a gas dynamic nozzle undergoing uh, supplied by combustion gases at a temperature t infinity and molecular weight of gases being w infinity right and this is what translates to something called a specific inputs. Now if you have a detonation engine pulse detonation engine the detonation wave keeps on propagating out and the uh, at this at the speed and what we find is that the speed of the wave is also directly proportional to t infinity divided by w infinity to the power of the same dependence. So effectively a pulse detonation rocket engine is not going to have a specific impulse that is way too different from a ordinary chemical rocket. So there is no way of beating around nature in this case right. So you are pretty much going to get the same result as, as we can see from this.